माय चैनल मरीनर शियान सो गाइस द टॉपिक ऑफ टुडेज डिस्कशन इज एन पी एस एच दैट इज नेट पॉजिटिव सक्शन हेड एस वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस अबाउट कैविटेशन एंड वेपर प्रेशर इफ यू हैव नॉट वॉच्ड इट गो टू माय डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो एंड वॉच इट इट इज वेरी मच इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक एंड इट इज कनेक्टेड विथ एन पी एस एच एंड बिफोर गोइंग ऑन टू द वीडियो आई वॉन्ट यू टू डू वन थिंग गाइज सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल एंड प्रेस ऑन द बेल आइकन फॉर फ्यूचर नोटिफिकेशन As we already know the basic principle and working of centrifugal pump as we have discussed in our previous video I will be giving you the link in my description you can go to my description and check out the basic working principle of centrifugal pump as it will be clear in your basics right hand side you can see the centrifugal pump as you already know the basic components of the centrifugal pump the volute casing impeller the place from where it take the suction that is the sump the water level the suction pipe and the discharge pipe all such things are in my right hand side you can see it very carefully to derive the net positive suction head we will be dealing with bernoulli's equation as we have already studied about bernoulli's equation when we were in school time in the plus 1 time so guys you might be familiar with the bernoulli's equation we will be taking two point into consideration the first point is some level that is the place from where the pump take the suction and the second point is the eye of the impeller as we already know the pump takes suction due to the pressure difference at the eye of the impeller there is negative pressure because of which the atmospheric pressure which is the higher pressure side will push the water towards the eye of the impeller as we have already discussed about this particular phenomena and process in our previous video there is nothing to add more to it now we will apply bernoulli's equation in the point 1 and point 2 point 1 is the sum level and point 2 is the eye of the impeller as we already know bernoulli's equation have got two side lhs that is left hand side and rhs that is right hand side so in the left hand side the equation will be p1 by rho g plus v1 square by 2g plus z1 and in the right hand side the equation will be p2 by rho g plus v2 square by 2g plus z2 plus losses losses may be in the form of mechanical losses friction losses head losses etc but the major loss is friction loss now guys this is your bernoulli's equation lhs and rhs as you can see in my screen now we will apply this particular equation that is our bernoulli's equation in point 1 as well as in point 2 so guys now let's apply bernoulli's equation lhs in point 1 and rhs in point 2 so in the lhs it will be p1 by rho g atmospheric pressure as atmospheric pressure is the pressure which is pushing the water towards the eye of the impeller towards the lower pressure side plus at the point 1 the velocity here it is zero as there is no moment of fluid the velocity at the sum is zero so we will take into consideration v1 equal to 0 that means the second term become zero plus z1 is also zero as head is zero from sum to sum the head is zero equal to now let's consider right hand side that is considering the point 2 that is the eye of the impeller the pressure at the eye of the impeller will be p2 by rho g plus v2 by 2g there will be certain velocity of fluid towards the eye of the impeller as we can clearly see so the equation will be p2 by rho g plus v2 square by 2g plus now what will be the suction lift from the sum towards the eye of the impeller the suction lift is hs so in place of z2 it will be hs so plus hs plus friction loss that is our majority loss as compared to other losses like ad loss head loss and other losses so as the flow rate increases the friction loss comes into command so this is your equation p1 by rho g plus 0 plus 0 equal to p2 by rho g plus v2 square by 2g plus hs plus friction loss now we need to find the pressure at the eye of the impeller so guys now let's equate the pressure at the eye of the impeller that is p2 by rho g so p2 by rho g 
will be equal to P1 by rho g atmospheric pressure minus V2 square by 2g plus suction lift that is HS plus friction loss. So by looking at the equation we can understand that the pressure at the eye of the impeller that is P2 by rho g will always be less than atmospheric pressure as we can already see it P1 by rho g atmosphere minus the bracketed term. So the pressure at the eye of the impeller will always be less than atmospheric pressure. As we have already discussed in our previous video on the cavitation video that the pressure at the eye of the impeller must be less than atmospheric pressure but it should not be so low and less that it become less than the vapor pressure of the fluid. If that happens it is sure that the cavitation will happen. So now we will be modifying the equation that is the pressure at the eye of the impeller that is P2 by rho g the pressure of the eye of the impeller will always be greater than the pressure that is the vapor pressure of the fluid. So we can see it very clearly P2 by rho g that is the pressure of the eye of the impeller is greater than P by rho g that is the vapor pressure of the fluid. So this is done to avoid cavitation as we have already discussed about the phenomena in our previous videos about cavitation in which we have discussed the pressure at the eye of the impeller should always be greater than the vapor pressure of the fluid. So this is the equation which we have modified. If this condition is satisfied that is the pressure at the eye of the impeller is greater than the vapor pressure of the fluid then there will be no cavitation. If this particular condition is not satisfied that is the pressure at the eye of the impeller is less than the vapor pressure of the fluid then it's sure the cavitation will occur and the depth of the pump is for sure. Now guys in this equation we can bring the RHS side towards the LHS side then the equation will be P2 by rho g minus P1 by rho g that is the vapor pressure is greater than zero. So from this equation we can understand that the suction pressure at the eye of the impeller minus the vapor pressure of the fluid is always positive and always greater than zero and the difference between these two units that is the pressure at the eye of the impeller and the vapor pressure of the fluid is known as NPSH net positive suction head. If the difference between these two units that is the pressure at the eye of the impeller and the vapor pressure of the fluid is greater than zero then there will be no cavitation. And if the difference is less than zero then there will be sure cavitation and it's the depth of the pump. No one can save the pump from cavitation. Now let's sum up the video. From this video we can come to a conclusion that the pressure at the eye of the impeller should always be greater than the vapor pressure of the fluid. If not cavitation will occur. The net positive suction head that is NPSH is the difference between the pressure at the eye of the impeller and the vapor pressure of the fluid and we should always keep in mind that the difference between these two units should always be greater than zero. It should never be negative. If it becomes negative then there will be cavitation. So our main intention is always to keep the difference between these two units that is the pressure at the eye of the impeller and the vapor pressure of the fluid should always be greater than zero. These are the few things that I wanted to share with you regarding net positive suction head. I hope this derivation part and the proof was very much simplified and easy to understand. If you really like the video guys press on the like button and if you find this video useful share with your friends as well. So before signing off guys do press the subscribe button and press on the bell icon for future notification. So guys this is Maranar Shiyan signing off. See you all next time with much more interesting videos like this. Thank you and have a nice day.